Amen and welcome to worship. What a wonderful way to stay, start worship on Palm Sunday. What a beautiful celebration. So welcome to worship all of you friends. It is great to see you all here. Thank you choir for starting us off on Palm Sunday with the greatest song of rejoice. And so friends, the peace of Christ be with you all. And, also with you. and let us greet one another. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And let us gather in a moment of prayer. Holy God and loving God, we thank you and we praise you on this Palm Sunday. We ask that you pour your Holy Spirit upon us as we sing Hosanna, as we shout for you to save us and redeem us. Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we ask that you pour your Holy Spirit upon us here and now. And we pray this and every prayer through Christ Jesus. And together we say... Amen. All right, so normally we would be skipping right past the children's moment since that's a nine o'clock thing and we don't have as many kids in this service, but it is Palm Sunday. So I think we need an adult children's moment. Don't you guys think we need that? So I won't go through the whole thing that I went through the kids. Like, what's it mean that it's Palm Sunday? Is it this kind of palm or this kind of palm? Walter really liked that, by the way. He was really excited about all that on the way uh, in this morning. But it's Palm Sunday. And we start Palm Sunday with our palm branches, thinking about all the ways that people raise their branches, put them on the ground, but also waved them in the air and shouted, Hosanna! Hosanna, say it with me, Hosanna, which means save now. But we also do a wonderful thing on Palm Sunday, and we take our palms and we turn them into crosses because we start the week with Palm Sunday with rejoicing, but then we make our way to Friday and we end up with the cross. Of course, when Sunday comes, it's the most amazing day when we realize that the tomb is empty as we journey through Holy Week. There are directions for how to make these crosses in the back of the sanctuary near Mr. McDonald there. So, and we bought, we got 300 palms. So there's enough palms for everybody. I've made a bunch of the palm crosses, put them into the other room. Some are up here. If you saw, I was doing a terrible job paying attention during the song, singing only so many words because I was making crosses at the same time. Uh, however, I'm going to walk you through it. Of course, I figured out that these gigantic palms, like this one here that I had was gigantic. You have to make the palms a little the crosses a little bit differently because the first one I came out with a gigantic cross came out terribly. So you have to make them a little bit differently, but it might be a good one to demonstrate. So I'm going to show you guys for our adult children's moment, how to make palm crosses. No promises. All right. We're going to do the best we can. I'm not the world's best teacher. Uh, so we're going to figure it out. So you have to decide where you want the top of your cross to be. Usually with the smaller ones, I, I start it more like here, but with these bigger ones, I'm going to start it a little bit taller and you bend it towards you. So you fold it towards you. You can pull off the straggly pieces or you can let the straggly pieces hang. It doesn't matter. So you've got the, the part folded in front towards you. And then you need to make the first arm of the cross. And so you're going to take it and make like a, you know, a triangular fold here. And you're going to make an arm of the cross. And I always uh, push it down so it's nice and firm. So then you've got this. It's easier when I only have to show you guys and not like you guys and the kids sitting up here. So maybe we'll get this. And then what we want to do is we've got it folded in front of us. Then we want to fold behind because the back part's actually going to be the pretty part. So we're going to fold it behind. Now, if you're making a proper cross, whatever that means, these should be the same length approximately. <laughs> and so now you fold it behind and then you've got this arm. And then with this arm, you've got to fold it back towards you. I hear lots of noises. I don't know how well this adult children's moment's going with all these noises. And then, so I remember, there's like concrete directions on how to do this. When I was a kid, I think I just learned how to do it and I just always did it my own way. So the one, once I get to this part, this is where I want this side, the back side to look pretty. The front side, that my side, I don't care what that side looks like. So I take it and I wrap it around the front and then I bring it up here and then I wrap it around the other side. And then in the back, I just take this piece and kind of like tie it through. How'd you do there, Miss Gay? Did you get it? <laughs> I don't want to see it. <laughs> and then I just kind of like tie it and tie a knot because this back part's going to be kind of ugly. But then on the front, you get that. So 
there you go. <laughs> Welcome to our adult children's moment. Uh, and so now, uh, with that said, if anybody has any announcements, come forward at this time. I know we've got some announcements, so come on forward and share those announcements. I will just share my announcement, which is that Saturday is our breakfast with the Easter Bunny, another youth group fundraiser. It's really, I think, quite possibly one of the last youth group fundraisers before the mission trip. So if you have any kids or grandkids that would be interested in this, make sure to sign up. You sign up online. Last I checked, we had about 78 people signed up. So we have plenty of room for more. So it's $5 per person, Easter egg hunt, Easter bunny, pictures, breakfast. It's really quite a good deal. Good morning. I want to thank everyone who donated to our baked goods sale yesterday. We had so many wonderful things, and we sold a lot. But we do have leftovers, only day old, and we're only asking for donations. So go in Cook Hall after church, or if you've been there already in between services, help yourself. If you want to contribute, it all goes to um, the youth group. So I appreciate that. Any leftovers, we'll just put in the freezer for your coffee hours. But thank you to everyone who baked. Good morning. I have two announcements. Uh, the first announcement is about a baking class that Anne-Marie will be teaching. Even though she wouldn't come up here, I'll be sharing. <laughs> so the class is on Saturday, April 20th. It starts at 10 o'clock. It's at the Niagara Falls Culinary Institute. And uh, we, oh, the cost is $40. We will be making coconut cream pies or mini cream puffs. We're not totally sure yet, but one of the two. So if you are interested, please just sign up. There's a sign up sheet um, on the bulletin board and we'd love to have you there. And then the second announcement is for our pastoral care class. Uh, that will be Wednesday, April 3rd. It's at five o'clock. It's actually going to be at my house. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, working on how to make a prayer room. So I'm going to show you mine and then teach you how you can do that in your own house. Uh, also, we'll have some appetizers. So it'll be uh, fun to um, hang out together and, and also work on prayer rooms. Um, I also live in Youngstown. So if you're interested, um, I'll give you my address, but sign up on the bulletin board. So thank you so much. Good morning. Um, I actually have two announcements today. The one, I'm sure you know what that might be. But I do want to start with the first announcement, and that is that today, uh, Marcel, who is in the praise band, and myself will be facilitating free breeze training after our service um, this morning. Um, so even if you are an expert on breeze, but you just need a refresher, or if you've never touched the breeze church application in your entire life, we are there for all levels. Um, and some of the things that we're going to be covering is how to download the Breeze app on your device, um, if you've never done that before. Some of you may have used Breeze in the past and you have no idea what your username or your password are. We're going to help you get those reset if you need to. Um, we're going we're gonna to go into the application. We'll talk about how you can access the church directory so that you can look up information for fellow members. We'll spend some time going in and updating, uh, making sure that your profile is updated, but also making sure that your beautiful photos are out in the app, because that is so important just to have that presence. Uh, we're going to spend some time talking about how you can use the Breeze app to access the church calendar and upcoming events. And then finally, we'll also spend some time talking about how you can go in and either enroll in online giving or make an edit or an update to your online giving. So we look forward to that. Uh, again, we'll be in Cook Hall after the service, and we look forward to anyone that wants to take part in that training. My second announcement is in regards to our basket raffle from yesterday. Did anyone win? Oh, lots of hands. I can tell who the people are that did not, and, you know, a little, a little disappointed. I'm sorry, I didn't make any promises. But before I share the results with you, I think it's important that um, I give a moment of thanks, because as you can imagine with an event like this, it takes a huge community to pull off a huge event like this. I'd like to first start by thanking everyone that donated baskets, basket items, their time, their gift cards. Um, I also want to thank our basket assembly crew. Can I please get a round of applause for all of you that made this event possible?
I also want to thank all of our bakers. Oh my goodness, the baked goods were very plentiful and, and delicious because I actually purchased some myself. So thank you for that. For everyone that assisted with the setup process, um, everything from moving tables to moving baskets 157,000 times. Uh, I want to thank everyone that took, uh, took part in the ticket sales. Um, I want to extend my thanks to the entire youth group for um, doing the Cheeses for Jesus grilled cheese and concessions. Um, I want to thank all of our baked goods sale committee. I know that there were several of you selling baked goods, um, and we did a fantastic job with that. Uh, everyone that took part in the crock pot cook off and organizing all that went into that, um, our face painters. Um, our Western New York Justice League, yesterday, if you weren't here, we had Scooby-Doo and Velma visiting us with us. Um, I also want to um, really thank, um, not, not that anyone is more or less important, but really thank our basket runners. Those baskets got more mileage on them than my car has. Um, I also want to thank the folks that helped with just identifying who the winners were for all of the unclaimed baskets. We had a lot of unclaimed baskets, and most of them are gone already this morning. Um, I want to thank all of our teardown crew. There's a lot that goes into putting the church back together after a huge event like that. And of course, last but not least, none of this would be available. None of this would be possible in terms of fundraising without our fundraising committee, which is the PBJs. So I'd like to really extend my deepest appreciation to Pastor Brianna, Jeff, who is my partner in crime, Joyce, um, Jill and Jacob, please give them a huge round of applause. And so with that said, now that I'm done talking, the, number, the, mum, the thing that you care about is how did we do? Uh, so first of all, I'll start off with our youth group. Our youth group um, made money selling the concessions as well as 100% of the proceeds from the basket route, or, excuse me, from the baked goods uh, went to our youth group and they raised $668. Uh, the proceeds of our basket raffle itself, which consisted of selling the tickets, selling um, you know, the half of the 50-50 donations that we received, $5,725. So again, thank you. We hope everyone enjoyed the event, and we'll look forward to doing it again next year. Before John heads out, you guys know none of this would be possible without John's leadership. Can we just give John a round of applause? Thank you, John. Good morning. Good morning. If you don't know me, I'm Dave Dombrowski. I'm the consistory vice president. I'm usually at the earlier service. Uh, now that COVID's over with, we'd like to give men's fellowship up again. Uh, we, I've had a few suggestions on places. Uh, it will meet once a month on a Saturday in the morning for breakfast. You know, we have a little fellowship, chatting, man gossip, all that kind of stuff. If you have any, I'm going to have to pick a day by th date by in May by Thursday. It's when we, I'd like to start it as in May. So I'll pick a date by Thursday. Ted, you got any suggestions? Uh, if you have any questions. Stop me, see me. My phone number's in the Breeze directory or an email. Just drop me a line. I'm going to go with Thursday. And it's just going to basically be a morning of fellowship, conversation, and good fun. And we'll decide how we're going to run it from there. So if you have any questions, give me a call. His contact information is also in the back of the bulletin since he is our vice president. And now let us join our hearts and minds together as we light our peace candle and as we pray for peace. Holy and loving God, on this day we take a moment to pause and to pray for peace. Lord, we pray for peace in the entire world, peace in this community, peace, Lord, in all the places experiencing war and strife. As we think about the procession into Jerusalem, Lord, we pray for Israel and Palestine. We pray that they can find peace. We pray, Lord, that there can be peace on earth and that we can be instruments of your peace. We lift this all in the name of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, and together we say, Amen. Amen.
would you join me for the call to worship? We come to prepare for the holiest of weeks. Jesus leads us through this week, and we will follow, for he is the life we long for. He is the word who sustains us. Setting aside all power, glory, and might, he comes modeling humi humility and obedience for all of us. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is the one who brings us the kingdom of God. And for our Palm Sunday reading, we are going to read from the Gospel of Mark, the 11th chapter. We will read the first 11 verses. And so open up as we read about the procession of Jesus into Jerusalem. And I do somewhere on here have my Jerusalem cross on for this Palm Sunday. And if you are ready to hear the word of the Lord, will you please say amen? amen. Starting with verse 1. 
When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied near a door outside the street, and as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. And then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. And then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And let us join in a moment of prayer. Holy God and loving God, we come to you on this Palm Sunday. We rejoice in your presence. And Lord, we ask that you bless the words of our mouths and the thoughts of our minds, so that all that we do and all that we say can be holy and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. 
Amen. So Jesus usually just strolled in and out of Jerusalem with his disciples by his side and with the crowds running up to Jesus because they wanted to hear what Jesus had to say or they wanted to be healed by Jesus. But this time, Jesus entered into Jerusalem with theatrics like never before because Jesus was not normally known for theatrics except this time, in this moment, Jesus had some theatrics accompany his procession into Jerusalem. Jerusalem as hundreds of thousands of pilgrims made their way into Jerusalem for the Passover Jesus entered the city with purpose and with meaning first he entered the city on a donkey a donkey that had never been ridden now it was known and understood by the people of that time that when a king entered a city on a horse that was a sign of war that was meaning that he was ready for war but when a king entered a city on a donkey that was seen as a sign of peace. And a donkey that had never been ridden, that was a sign of purity. And Jesus, when he entered into the city, everybody saw him and they took off their cloaks and they spread their cloaks on the the pathway that he would take into Jerusalem. And they did that because their ancestors had done exactly that for the kings of Israel that had come before. And then they went and they, they took down the branches from the trees. They took down the palm branches they put some of the branches on the ground and they waved those branches in the air which was the same thing that their ancestors had done when Simon Maccabeus had entered Jerusalem victorious and they shouted Hosanna shout it with me Hosanna meaning save now save us now Jesus These were an oppressed people. These were people who were tired and who were sick of the Roman Empire's oppression. These were people who wanted deliverance. They wanted a savior. And they saw Jesus coming and they said, Hosanna, save us now. Jesus, save us now. There are so many ways that we can learn from Jesus. So many ways that we can learn from Jesus, but the one way and the only way we're going to talk about today, because we're going to keep things a little short and sweet today, the only thing that I want us to focus on today is the courage of Jesus. Because when Jesus entered into Jerusalem, with all of that pomp and circumstance, When Jesus entered into Jerusalem with all of the theatrics and everybody was celebrating, Jesus knew what was in front of him. Jesus knew what was coming. And the moment that Jesus entered Jerusalem, even though he knew exactly what was coming, he had courage. He was full of courage. And the moment that Jesus entered into the temple, Mark tells us it wasn't immediately when he went into the temple, but it was the next day when he went into the temple. We know what Jesus did when he went into the temples, right? What did Jesus do? He flipped those tables. Jesus knew exactly what he was doing on the day that we called Palm Sunday and the day to follow. To the people to the regular people. He was a sign of peace, a sign of hope, a sign of deliverance, and a sign of salvation because the people needed hope. The people needed deliverance. The people needed hope. The people needed salvation. But to the leaders, to the leaders, those who wanted power, those who were jealous of Jesus, Those who found themselves enraged to the leaders, Jesus had a different message. He called out their hypocrisy. He called out their greed. He called out their injustices. And man, did that take courage. I've said this before, but I genuinely know for sure, that Jesus had more courage and like, I don't even think like the tiny end of his pinky finger, but like the tiny bit of the nail that sticks out on his pinky finger. He had more courage in that tiny part of his body than I have in my entire self. He had more courage in the tiny part of his finger than I have in my entire being. Because when I need to be courageous about something, when I need to maybe confront somebody or when I need to do something that I don't want to do, I'm not as courageous as Jesus. 
Jesus. Is anybody here as courageous as Jesus? Probably not. I mean, if you are, good for you. But if you're like me, I'm not courageous like Jesus. Instead, here is what I do sometimes in conflict, and some of you have seen me this way. Sometimes when there's times of conflict, I turn into a certain kind of animal. Any guesses what animal that is? A turtle. I will literally like curl up. Like I'm trying to get inside some invisible shell and curl away and hide away from the world because I don't have courage like Jesus. When bad things happen, when when there's conflict that I I don't want to be a part of, I just want to curl up in a little ball and hide. But Jesus didn't cower. And when we think about Palm Sunday, we should all be in awe of the courage of Jesus because he knew exactly what was coming his way. He knew that all of these things that he was going to do, that his procession into Jerusalem, that was going to be the final straw for the leaders. And then not even that, flipping the tables, that was going to be it. He knew that he was signing his own death sentence the moment that he made all of these happen but Jesus he had courage and all of this to Jesus it was worth it because deliverance salvation it was worth it to Jesus so here is my question for all of us on this Palm Sunday As we think about the courageous entry into Jerusalem, do you need to have more courage like Jesus? Raise your hand. Give me a little wave if you need to have more courage like Jesus. Are you a turtle like me? I think sometimes a lot of us that end up in church are a little bit more like turtles, you know, and so maybe you're a turtle like me, or are you fearless like Jesus? Or are you a lion like the Wizard of Oz, you know, the cowardly lion? Or are you more triumphant? Are you like Harriet Tubman and you are not afraid to face something in order to save the lives of others? I don't know what we are all like, and I don't know how we need more courage in our lives, but what I do know is that we have the greatest example of courage that ever lived. When we look at Jesus, we have the greatest example of courage that ever lived. How do we know that we have the greatest example? Because when we look at the other great examples, when we look at the Harriet Tubmans, when we look at the other wonderful people who did wonderful things, do you know who they looked at? They looked at Jesus. They looked at the courage of Jesus. So for these other amazingly courageous of people to do all these courageous things and to know that they were looking to Jesus, we know that we have the most courageous teacher of all time. And thank God that we do because living life as a human is hard. <laughs> Living life as a human can be so very hard. I spend every single one of my days fielding phone calls from people who are struggling with being human because being a human is hard. Being a human is full of emotions. Being a human takes a lot of courage, and sometimes it's hard to summon up the courage that we need to be human. Being a human is hard. Sometimes we need courage just to get out of bed, don't we? Sometimes we need courage to have difficult conversations. Sometimes we need courage to face the events that are ahead of us. It takes courage to be a good human. But here's the good news, and then we're going to wrap it up. Anybody want to hear some good news today? On this Palm Sunday, Bob's raising his hand, and he's already heard this good news, and he still wants to hear the good news. We need courage And we can find that courage in Jesus. Every single one of us, we need courage. But here's the thing. We were given the power of the Holy Spirit, and the power of the Holy Spirit lives within us, and the power of the Holy Spirit is the gift of Jesus. So we can tap into that courage. And when we need courage to say no to something, when we need courage to say no to temptations or addictions that can be so trying, we can tap into that courage that we can find in Jesus. When we need courage to take difficult paths instead of taking the easy way out, because sometimes it's so much easier to take the easy way out, but sometimes we have to take the difficult path like Jesus. When we need the courage to take the difficult path, we can tap into the courage that we find in Jesus. Jesus, when we need courage to make changes in our lives, because sometimes we need to make changes in our lives. Sometimes we get a little bit too complacent. Sometimes we need to mix things up in our lives. Does anybody ever need to mix anything up in their lives? Sometimes you never want to. Thank you for your honesty. Sometimes we need to mix things up in our lives. And that 
that takes courage. And we can find that courage. And guess who? In Jesus. When we need courage to say sorry when we've hurt somebody's feelings. When we need courage to make amends. And that takes a different kind of courage, doesn't it? That takes courage mixed with humility. When we need courage to apologize, we can find that courage in Jesus. When we need courage to overcome adversity or to start a a necessary but difficult conversation, we can find that courage in Jesus. When we need courage to hold somebody accountable, I don't know that this is something I'd have much courage to do, but when we need courage to hold somebody accountable, we have the greatest teacher of all time because that's exactly what Jesus did when he went face to face with those leaders. He held them accountable. He revealed their hypocrisy when we need the courage to hold people accountable. We can find that courage in, guess who? Jesus. Jesus shows us how to be courageous. So whether you're like me and you're a turtle and you'd rather just curl up in your shell and wait for it all to go away, or maybe you're like the lion and the wizard of Oz, or maybe somehow you have some of that courage that's in Jesus. We can think on Palm Sunday about the ways that we can become more courageous because we have the greatest teacher of all times. So as we gather here on this Palm Sunday, as we raise those palm branches in the air, I've turned all mine into crosses so I can't raise any more in the air, but we can raise our palm branches in the air and we can shout, Hosanna, Hosanna. And tap into the courage of Jesus. Whatever every single person here is facing. Whatever we need more courage to do in our lives. And I know being a human takes courage. And it's hard to be a human. Find that courage in Jesus. Get that strength from Jesus. And maybe you'll find that you won't be quite a turtle anymore. You'll start to lift your head up because that courage of Jesus is contagious. Let's join in a moment of prayer. Holy and loving God, Jesus gave up his life because we were worth it to him. Jesus gave up his life for hope, for deliverance, for peace and for salvation. Lord, his courage is tremendous. So Lord, on this Palm Sunday, as we begin this holiest of holy weeks, give us courage. Give us courage to do whatever it is that we need to do. Give us courage to be strong and to stay faithful. Give us courage to be good humans in this world. Give us courage, Lord. And we pray this in every prayer through Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power in the glory forever. Amen. Let's now join together and present our tithes and offerings.
And let us pray together. Gracious God, may this act of giving transform our hearts and our minds. May you bless these gifts and use them to do your will. Through Christ we pray. Amen.
And now go forth with the blessing of God. Go forth with the love of Christ. Go forth, be blessed, and be a blessing to all.